Hello and welcome. This is Michelle with Paper Stamp Inc. Thanks for stopping by my channel where you receive tips, techniques, and tutorials to inspire you in your own paper crafting projects. If that sounds like something that interests you, make sure to hit that red subscribe button down below, tap the bell, and that'll get you notifications when I post future videos. So today we're going to make two cards using the Floral Romance paper. And if you have not seen this, it does have some beautiful pieces of vellum in there. So there is just our, um, I shouldn't say just our normal designer series paper because that, that normal paper is very beautiful as well. But it, we've got some specialty paper in there as well. And you get um, two 12 by 12 sheets, I believe it is, of this paper as well in that. So gorgeous piece. And we're going to play with that vellum today. And then I'll, let's go ahead and bring in, before we get into our stamps, let's bring in the, the paper pieces. So we are making two cards, so there's quite a few pieces of paper here. I've got my Fresh Fig, very vanilla and petal pink, and now I know that these colors are going to coordinate because Stampin' Up! gives us the colors that coordinate with the Designer Series paper. If you're ever not sure, make sure to keep those cardboard backing pieces that come in your Designer Series paper, and you will see that they have listed the colors, the coordinate. It's also in the catalog and online, so it makes it really easy for us to make sure everything is meshing well with our paper and our inks and the designer series paper. So, Fresh Fig, this is one of our colors that we'll be retiring, so playing with that and having fun before it goes away in June. This is a side folding card, so it is eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. And then I have an inside layer that is four by five and a quarter. And for the front, I have these two pieces. And of course, we're going to use our designer series paper, that vellum, but I'll, I'll get into those dimensions when we start cutting. So this piece is uh, Blushing Bride, and it is four by three. And then I have a very vanilla piece to mat on there, and that is three and three quarters by two and three quarters. So that is card one. For card two, we have a top folding base in mossy meadow. And this is 11 by 11 by four and a quarter, scored at five and a half for top folding card. Again, that same size uh, in, interior piece in very vanilla, that is four by five and a quarter. And then I have some scrap pieces. I've got a scrap piece of Blushing Bride. And then this is actually a full uh, quarter sheet piece of the Fresh Fig. I didn't have any smaller scraps. Now, when I cut into my paper, if I'm cutting a, a layer, then I tend to go ahead and cut the rest of that up into quarters. The same with my bases. You get two standard card bases out of a sheet of 8.5 by 11 cardstock. So I will go ahead and, and cut that other piece down or don't really have to cut it but go ahead and fold it so that I have bases ready to go and then I have these quarter sheet pieces that are easy to trim down um, as needed to fit onto my base. So just a little tip to kind of make things easy and quick with your card making. And I also have a couple of um, other items to mention. I've got our uh, pearl jewels that we're going to use. Of course dimensionals because um, if you've watched my videos, I love dimensionals. There's usually a, a dimensional somewhere on most of my cards. And then first, the stamps, we're going to mix and match today. So instead of focusing on one stamp set, we're going to have fun pulling from a variety of stamp sets. So for the sentiments, I picked this Wishes for a Lifetime of Love and Happiness. And the um, Thankful Thoughts, if you could see my face, you'd see the smile you put on it. I just liked the scripts in these. I liked... Um, I, what the sentiment said. I thought that they just went well with the paper. And then I am using from the Tropical Chic this leaf image and this floral image, which I thought were a good match to the paper as well. So our inks, again, we're going to coordinate those with our DSP and we're going to use Fresh Fig, Mossy Meadow, and Blushing Bride. All right. Let's go ahead and get started with our stamping. I'm going to bring, bring a piece of grid paper in to protect my work surface. And if you haven't seen this paper before, it's a quarter size of our large size grid paper. And let me straighten this up. I think I've got you guys twisted a little bit there. And 
these come already cut down in quarters so that they fit wonderfully in the Stamparatus tool. But of course you can use them for other things, not just in your Stamparatus. I like that it gives me a smaller um, area, surface area that I can use here. Let's get started with this one first. So let's bring out our base and our papers. And we're gonna get the trimmer and go ahead and cut this paper down. So of course you can use these same dimensions and mix and match your papers, mix and match your sentiments and get a completely different look. So when you're seeing my card projects, please, if you wanna copy them exactly the way they are, go ahead and do that. But use them as an inspiration point. Use them as a, as a starting place too and make them your own. So I'm gonna cut this down. This is a six by six sheet. I'd already cut some of my paper down into six by sixes for some paper shares and I had some left over so I decided to use those to make up some cards. So we're gonna cut this one at four inches by five and a quarter, okay? And that's gonna get us our base layer. And then I'm gonna put these, that small strip to the side, and we're gonna go ahead and cut this one down to five and a half for our second card. So we're gonna end up with this one little piece of scrap. If you wanna find something to do with that, um, by all means, hang on to it. I just did not come up with something for this card. I know sometimes it's hard to let go of those beautiful specialty papers. So let's talk a little bit about vellum before I adhere this to the card. So vellum is, of course, it's it's opaque. It's got that see-through um, factor to it. So if you just go and put your glue on the back of there or your, your um, any kind of adhesive, you're going to end up seeing that through the paper. So there's a few things you can do. You can choose to hide your adhesive under where you're putting your stamped image. So, like this, go ahead and leave these. That's okay. We can leave these ends ends loose. So that's what I chose to do on this one. Okay. Another thing that you can do, and we're going to do this on the on our other sheet, is use our silicone mat and come in with a sponge dauber. And what I do is I actually cut my um, sponges into quarters and I use a binder clip to hold on to them and use our Tombow glue and we're going to pat that over the back and you're not going to be able to see that adhesive. So we'll get to that in just a moment. Hang tight, but I wanted to share with you those couple of tips about utilizing your, um, your designer stage paper and the vellum. So let's do our stamping. I'm going to bring out our Mossy Meadow and our Fresh Fig. And I'm gonna stamp that sentiment in the Fresh Fig. And let's see, make sure that I have it facing the right way. <laughs> Anybody else ever done that? I, I hope I'm not the only one that's ever actually put my uh, stamp upside down. So what I like to do often with these um, stamps, the rubber, red rubber stamps, is to go ahead and use my grid paper and do a test first. And I will line these up. So I'm lining up those two top points with that grid line and stamp that. And I want to see, yep, that's stamping straight for me. So just a, a quick check before I put it on my card. And then I'm going to use this to line up as well. So I'm going to line that piece up. It's a great way to use your grid pattern paper. Now I can't exactly see those um, lines behind there, the grid lines, but I can see them coming into the side of my my paper, my cardstock. So I'm going to try and do my best to line those up and stamp straight down. And there we go. Now we're going to bring in some mossy meadow and we're going to put some leaves on there. And I want to get some different looks with my leaf. So I'm going to come in first with it stamped at full. My, this ink pad's getting a little dry on me. So I'm going to ink that up a little bit extra. 
and I'm going to come in and stamp there and then I'm going to come over here and let's go ahead and put a lighter image in that corner and I'm going to come down and do the same down here full strength and then just a little corner of that lighter image. Now, I like to do odds. Um, it's up to you what you want to do. But I want to bring another lighter one in on both these corners. So to do that, I'm just going to stamp off on my grid paper and then bring it in here. And I'm actually getting a little bit of a kind of three different colors in there. So I think that mimics the way the colors show up in nature much better than doing just one solid color. So my adhesive of choice that I like to use for almost all, if not all of my projects pretty much, is the Tombow Mono Multi. As you've heard me say before, if you watch my videos a little bit, it goes a long way and it allows you to shift your paper around to get it in just the right spot to get a nice even matting. All right, let's go ahead and come in here, and I'm just going to put some glue around the middle there because I, I know that this piece is going to more than, than cover that up. Stick my vellum piece down, and you can see what I mean about that showing through. So not very attractive, right? But we're going to take care of that because we are going to cover it up with with this piece. Sorry, I seem to be going out of camera a little bit there. I will try and be a little more careful. There we go. And now we're just going to do our insides. So don't forget to decorate the insides of your cards as well. I'm going to come in with some of this fresh fig. And I love this floral image here. And I'm just going to put that down in one corner. You could do as many of those as you want. Bring in some of the leaves. Have some fun with it. Uh, you know, just make sure you leave a little bit of room for writing. If you're like my son and don't really like to write cards, maybe leave very little room <laughs> for writing on it. And there we go. Just like that, we've got card number one do, done. Let's go ahead and do card number two. And while I've got this out, I'm going to go ahead and just stamp our inside piece for card number two. I can put that away. And we're going to use this strip to go right down the side of our card. And just like that. So this is where I'm going to bring in my silicone mat. And I just do the silicone mat because it... Um, you know, if you get off a little bit, it's going to get sticky. And I'm just going to put a little blob of glue there, pick it up, and I'm just going to tap that over my, my vellum piece. I don't need a whole lot of it, but I'm, I'm trying to kind of get around those, those corners and those edges so that it will adhere down nicely. For us. Move that out of the way. And let's line that top up. Oops. And our side. And there we go. Looks like I've got this piece is slightly longer than my card base, so I'm just going to come in with my paper snips and trim that off even with my card. There we go. And for our sentiment, we are going to use the pretty label punch. I forgot to mention that one when I was giving you all of our different tools. And actually, before I punch that out, I am going to, I, I wanted the sentiment to be really deep and dark. And with it being on the Blushing Bride, I knew I was probably going to want to stamp it multiple times. Well, trying to get multiple times stamped in the same exact place, 
Um, I can't line that up by eye, so that's where I brought in my Stamparatus. If you have not seen the Stamparatus, this is a, an amazing tool. So I'm going to just stick my image because we're going to punch it out. I don't really care exactly where it is on there. I'm going to push down, pick that up. These magnets are super strong. They're going to hold that piece of paper in place for me. And then I can simply come in and ink this up. I'm getting off camera there. I'm a little tight, so I'll kind of scooch this over so you guys can see. So I am just inking up that image and pushing down. This is also great if you have a hard time getting an, an image to stamp. So do you you know if you have something that's got a lot of detail and you're you're kind of afraid, am I gonna get all of that detail in there. I went a little crazy, so I'm going to rub that edge off there. Um, use your Stamparatus because you can go over it and over it and over it. So see how that image is getting darker for me on that sentiment? I think I'm going to do this at least one more time, and let's see, see if I'm happy with that. But if I was trying to just stamp and line this up without the, the help of the Stamparatus, there is just no way that I would be getting that in the same place. I would end up with a mess on my hands, that's for sure. And I think that's probably going to do it for us. Yep, I am happy with that. And I think I'm definitely going to have to ink up my Mossy Meadow. It's one of those, those inks that I use quite a bit, so make sure you're picking up those re-inkers. And all you've got to do is add a little bit of ink in there and get your, your pad rejuvenated and ready to go. So let's go ahead and punch this out using that pretty label punch. And I'm just going to come in here and line that up. All right. And then I'm going to use this piece now. I'm going to push this in. Instead of going to the side, I'm going to push this in as far as I can towards the center. And I'll tell you why I'm doing that after I punch this out. So by doing that, that's going to allow me to trim this down slightly and use it for a card base. So for example, on this one, if I was to use this as a background piece and I've got this sentiment set there, I'm going to cover that over. So I can still use this as a background. If I cut it towards the edge too close, probably not. All right, we're gonna do a little, a little trick here to mat our punched sentiment. I'm just gonna cut this straight down the middle with my paper snips. And I'm gonna put a little bit of glue along the edge. Bring this piece in here, and I'm just gonna give it a a nice little border. We're going to do the same with this piece. And I, some people like to do this from the back. I, I like to do it from the front where I can see it a little bit better. And now we've got a nice border for our, our sentiment so that it pops off a little bit better. And what's going to make it pop up even more? Of course, dimensionals. That's going to give us that extra, a little bit of extra stuff there. And I am going to just put two of these will suffice for this piece. My goodness, that is not wanting to come off there. I just got these uh, fun color street nails. They're very easy to apply, but I'm still getting used to having those nails. And... Uh, they they kind of get in the way a little bit. Let's see, I've actually pulled off the adhesive off of that somehow. All right, I don't know how people do that all the time with these these nails. So I am going to put this piece down in the corner here, and then let's go ahead and bring in our inside piece. Place that right inside 
And let me grab my, that's what I should have grabbed earlier, is my take a pick tool. That would have helped me get those backings off much easier. I'm going to swap this out so this just slides. You've got a spatula end and you've got a paper piercing end, a putty end to use to pick up little sequins or little pieces of paper, and then there's actually a stylus attachment as well that I don't have out right now. But, um, but yeah, this is a great tool to have that you can get right up under those. Let's see, I've got a little, I'm gonna cover up my little smear that I did there. So, get this right under there. Now we're gonna add just some, scatter some around. I like to use different sizes when I do these. And I think I'm gonna leave it at, at three. You could definitely do more. Oops, I forgot the one extra little step. I've got that piece of paper that's exactly four inches across, which is the width of our width of our inside piece there. So I'm going to bring back my silicone mat and put some glue down there. And let's go ahead and use this as an accent on the inside of the card. We could do that on either one of the cards, but I've got this one handy. So let's come in and just add that nice little decorative touch and use up that designer series paper. And there we have our two cards. I hope that you enjoyed that. I hope that you use this to create some projects of your own. Make sure that you do something creative today and share it with someone you love. Have a good night.